This is Susan Muskie. I am here to tell you about our Arboretum, Arboretum project through the Lamore County Soil Conservation District. So uh, late in the fall of 2017, Don and Mary Lou Jensko approached us and wanted to donate two acres of land to the Lamore County Soil Conservation. Um, so I wasn't prepared for this, you know, so it rose a lot of questions in the beginning. Can we accept it? Will it get used? You know, can we afford to build an arboretum? Uh, does it fit with our goals? You know, can we actually use our funding for this type of project? In talking with Don and Mary Lou, they um, had hoped that we would plant some of the unique horticultural varieties out there on this arboretum. Um, you know, and that's what they're donating the land specifically for the purpose of education on trees and things. And I said, well, you know, as a soil conservation, we have to be careful with how we use our funds and we really want this as an educational promotion, you know, for the trees that we plant uh, for windbreaks and shelter belts. So we came to an agreement that we would plant 80% conservation trees and about 20% of the unique horticultural varieties um, that can be grown around here. So this is what the two acres of land looks like. Uh, Mary Lou's place is just to the north of this area. And then this was just a little two acre hay meadow they had, um, small pile of, of equipment that they had in the middle there, they cleaned that up. And then there's um, one big giant old willow tree in there and then a couple trees neighboring to the south. So when we first got started, you know, if there's a whole bunch of questions, how do we do this? Do we hire an architecture to design it? You know, how do we even design an arboretum? Are we gonna need a deer fence? Do we need to make it handicap accessible if we have a walking path? Um, you know, what about watering the trees? Do we need to dig a well? Are we gonna get fancy and add, you know, features and mounds and edging? And very quickly, it became very overwhelming. You know, I started Googling Arboretum projects and this is what came up and I thought, holy cow, this is beyond me. So we just decided to keep it simple. We had to tone things down a little bit and uh, make it something that we could actually handle. So I went and I viewed the Arboretum up at Absaraca and I found something that I absolutely loved and I thought, well, this is manageable. We can add mulch around trees with some nameplates and we can do that. So some decisions were made. Um, basically, we were gonna keep it simple. So finally, in August of 2018, we just grabbed a shovel and we were ready to plant some trees. Uh, we have a local greenhouse that had some potted trees for sale, you know, so at that late in the year, that's about all we could plant, but we were excited to get going. So that's what we did. Here's a picture of Mary Lou Jensko standing beside the very first tree planted in the arboretum donated by her. So that's kind of neat. So I was the architect, quote unquote, um, on hire for this. And so it was up to me to come up with a design. So I got out my graph paper or a spreadsheet rather. And um, these are the first trees that we planted in the arboretum in the fall of 2018. We planted seven potted trees. Here we are standing beside the second one planted. And then I decided to just go to town and start making a plan for the next spring. Uh, we we're excited to get this project up and running. And so we left a little space in the uh, northeast corner for the unique horticultural stuff. And on the south edge, I wanted to plant some woodbine down there uh, to grow up for kind of a privacy to the neighbors to the south. Uh, later, we decided to change that to grapes because I realized wood bite are poisonous and I didn't want to attract the public and have a poisonous berry on a fence. Um, but I also wanted to know exactly where the property line was to the west because there was a field there and I wanted to make sure we planted our trees far enough off that property. So as you can see on this image, it looks like maybe the property that I thought we were owning is even encroaching on the field a little bit. So I thought, oh, it's you know very important to know where that property line is. Well, this led to an interesting little wrench in the project um, because this is what the city map looks like. This is actually within city limits. And so what we own is actually lots one through 12 and 13 through 24 which means we do not own the alleyway or this roadway. Um, so this, this was kind of interesting to me. Now remember, we've already planted a few trees out here. So when working on that, maybe I should back up a little bit. They said, just 
you know, I asked them if they would abandon the roadway and abandon the alleyway. And they said, you know, no, they didn't want to. And it was a little involved, you know, maybe just don't plant anything in those particular spots. So we we're going to try to avoid that. In this process, working with some of the people from the city, we found out that this area has been also sprayed with Tordon in the past. So this project that I'm so excited to get going now has a few roadblocks in it. Um, we did some testing, which is very expensive, so we only tested two spots, but they did not find any Tordon. Um, not to say that it couldn't have moved or leached in the soil, so we might still be in trouble years down the road. But anyway, for now at least, we can move forward. So. By the spring of 2019, we have over about 20 trees planted out there and a few shrubs. Uh, the little yellow circles are the unique horticultural varieties up in the front. And then the bigger circles all represent the adult mature canopy that it'll eventually be. When you overlay the roadway and the alleyway, you can see largely we tried to avoid this. However, one of those original trees I planted in the beginning does actually creep onto the roadway part. So this is what our arboretum now looks like. So it's really taking shape nicely. We ended up putting a sign out there, welcome to the arboretum. We got that out of Newman Signs in Jamestown. It looks really nice. Uh, the public is now taking notice of this and asking questions. Here's one of our planted trees and you can see here the little individual signs that we ended up putting by all of them. So um, that actually was a nice little feature to it. And really not expensive at all. I think the holders were about seven, eight dollars, and then the sign itself was another maybe six or seven dollars. We ended up purchasing um, watering bags. They hold 15 gallons each, and then it drips out the bottom slowly. So we just bring a tank filled with water. Here we are putting up the grapevine fence. Um, I did not know a lot about fencing, so this was definitely an interesting project. Um, talk a little bit more about that on a video in the end. But the grapes grew very prolifically. These are only the second year grapes. Uh, Valiant is the variety and they're really taking hold. So we got lots and lots of grapes off of that even just by the second year. Uh, the public really enjoyed coming out and picking those grapes. So this is what our Arboretum looks like today. Um, after this year, 2020, we have about 70 trees, shrubs, wildflowers and grasses. Um, I did kind of give up on avoiding the road and alleyway, deciding that if anything ever happens down the road, we'll just be responsible for removal. Um, but so, you know, now we have the, the pink circles show the wildflowers planted, the green circles show the grasses, and then the others are the trees and shrubs. Um, we have a designated parking area in the northwest and then sort of a pergola area to walk through. It's really looking nice. Um, so everything is coming along really good. But we are in need of maintenance. So now that we have built it, now we need to take some time to maintain it. Uh, we have weeds, we have you know, some fences around them that need to come down. We have this little gall thingy on this oak tree that we probably should have taken care of right away because now there's a lot of them. We did buy some potted stock in the beginning and I do like potted stock and the fact that you can plant it you know, later in the season. Um, my favorite is bare root, but of course that has to be planted right away in the spring. And potted stock works good for a lot of things, um, but for maples, when the roots grow so fast, you just get a lot of circling roots. So you really have to take some time to slice through those and get them to open up. Um, you can just really see the roots here. And this particular tree never did root out there nicely. We had a little pocket gopher come through. Um, we've got one tree out there. I'm not sure why he's so droopy, you know, and then these strings and the stakes that we used to hold them up, you know, that needs some maintenance. And then this fall, we finally got hit with a little deer damage. So what we did was we found a local retired person who's got some carpentry skills and he is very good at horticultural things and has a big interest. So he uh, donated a lot of his time but um, helped us clean up the Arboretum and he actually built us this pergola to walk through, which I think looks really nice. Little entrance area there. And so here it is kind of taking shape. We've got a bench out here. We've got our little features in front with you know just some rocks and some driftwood. Uh, here's some of the unique things up front. That's my daughter posing with some weeping caragana. 
otherwise some mini twist pines and the weeping spruces. So it's really coming along nicely. Some of the wildflowers, a Maximilian sunflower and a little blue stem there. Our project total um, has come to over the three years, $9,500. Most of it has been in the plants that we have bought because we're trying to buy bigger stock just to get it you know, up and running a little faster. Certainly we could have saved most of this money planting smaller conservation stock. And then it's just what to have in the future. You know, we'll want a few more shrubs probably. I'd love to have a geocache site out there, maybe a picnic table, and mostly just to maintain what we have. Hello, I'm Susan Muskie with the Lemoore County Soil Conservation District. I'm here to talk to you about our Arboretum project. Um, so I'm standing here in front of our sign. We had Newman signs make up in Jamestown. Um, it's kind of facing a well-traveled road. Um, and this is a little two acre spot that we have behind here that we have planted up to trees and shrubs and wildflowers and grasses. So we can take a little tour around it. Um, we, it was donated to us by uh, Mary Lou and Don Jensko. They live right north of here. And when we first started this project, <laughs> a little traffic, like I said, well-traveled road. Um, when we first started this project, we um, had the agreement with Mary Lou that we would plant about 80% of our trees and shrubs to conservation type stock. And then the remaining 20% could be the really fun horticultural type stuff, the more unique stuff. So that was kind of our compromise to, um, you know, get a little educational aspect with it along with kind of the fun stuff. So up front here is where we have our more horticultural plants, our more unique varieties. Um, we got a lot of them from Isley Nursery. And they're more of like the unique evergreens, um, the mini twist pines, a little Medora juniper. Um, this is all, the area is all mulched under the snow here, so kind of one big area. Um, off to the side, we've got like some, some weeping spruces and some more unique evergreens. So this is our grapevine fence on the south side of the property. Um, I decided we should put a fence along here kind of as a privacy to the neighbor to the south and have some vines grow up on it, kind of hopefully kind of blocking that view. Originally, I thought of a uh, woodbine, Virginia creeper, because it grows so fast and gets the pretty red in the fall. But then I got to thinking about the fact that those berries are poisonous and if we're inviting the public, you know, I wouldn't want some kid to come and eat a berry. So we switched it up to grapevines, which I think is more fun anyway. And they grew really well, even though it was only the second year. So we got lots and lots of grapes, which the public really enjoyed. So that actually was a good attractant for the public to come and visit. So when designing this grape fence, I knew nothing about grape fences. So I did a lot of research and asked a lot of people. And anytime you do that, you get a lot of answers. But the one answer that seemed to be similar was overbuild it. You wouldn't believe how much those grapevines pull on those wires and break the wires. And once you have broken wires and you try to restring it back up, you're going to have a mess. Overbuild, overbuild. A common theme, everybody said that. Look at the size of these posts I bought. I think we could keep buffalo out of this arboretum if we had to. But by golly, I was going to overbuild it. So we have huge posts. We have lots of wires. Um, and look at the size of these grapevines. They are only two years old, so they are growing wonderfully. These are the Valiant grapes. And then I did do two other kinds on the way down. I did a King of the North and a, I think it's a Somerset, and neither one of them are near as prolific. So it's good to have variety, but boy, I kind of wish they were all as prolific as these guys. But um, funny little story with building this fence. It was in the spring of the year and I'm busy planting trees and it was kind of the last thing I wanted to do. Um, but I have a, a friendly neighbor who was willing to trade me some free manure spreader rent and he would help build this. So I thought, oh, two to three hours tops, start to finish. We did it on a Sunday in between tree planting, you know, because we don't plant on Sundays. So I thought, okay, I'll, I'll take up the short part of my afternoon. Oh my gosh, I am not a fence builder. I am pretty sure he never wants to build fence with me again. <laughs> it took us five or six hours. I had all the wrong materials. We had to you know, travel to two or three different spots to get the right stuff. And apparently it makes a difference if you get started off straight right in the beginning, <laughs> because I did not, and this very much bothered him. So he actually made us pull out a few posts and redo them. 
So we now have a beautiful fence that I'm proud of that I will take zero credit for. We did put the fabric along here because I was worried about grass growing up and not being able to like weed trim under it and like the lawnmower not getting up there. Um, Cause one of my concerns with the whole arboretum is just ongoing maintenance. And so I think the fabric here was a good idea. Then we just punched holes for the individual grapes. Nothing else has fabric, but this does. So here we are kind of over on the west end of the property. I'm standing by our American larch here. Um, and I love these things. They look so dead in the winter time and then they just pop to life in the spring as they are, I gotta think about this, a deciduous conifer. So not an evergreen. Did I say that right? <laughs> There's something, <laughs> but they're really cool. Um, and so these, this is the edge of our property as you can see the, the spruce trees down there. And then that's kind of the part that actually is a city roadway as I tried to get the city to abandon that potential roadway area and they wouldn't. They, um, you know, just kind of cautioned maybe to, to try to not plant on it as much. And that also gives a little buffer between the neighboring farmer and the horticultural trees. Because let me tell you, that farmer was plenty nervous when he found out we were planting all these horticultural trees right next to a field he sprays. Um, he's a very nice person, but you know, doing the best he can, but there's always that chance, so. So over here on the northwest edge, we have this beautiful pergola built. Um, we have a, a fellow donating some time. He's a retired community person with some past carpentry skills um, and just offered to build this for us, which I think is absolutely beautiful. So we're trying to encourage people to drive down this road and park right behind us. So I'm thinking of getting a parking sign and an arrow pointing, and then they can kind of walk through this beautiful pergola as they enter the Arboretum. 